this is Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicles, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Stories of the Supernatural. Wherever you find us, whether it's a video or podcast on your favorite platform, please like and subscribe to us so that you can get notification of when a new show is released. You can also find us on major social media platforms. If you go to MiamiGhostChronicles.com, you can find links to the videos or MP3 files, which you can download and enjoy without commercial interruptions. If you're into classic horror, ghost, and adventure stories, I narrate Nightshade Diary, and you can find links at NightshadeDiary.com. If scary stories are your bag, and listening to encounters with cryptids, ghosts, dogmen, and other weird creatures sends a shiver up your spine, then go to SupernaturalStoryTime.com for links to our weekly podcasts. Noteworthy news about the paranormal world, true crime, conspiracy stories, and anything that is just plain weird can be found at eerie.news or visit the Stranger Than Fiction Stories tab at MiamiGhostChronicles.com. Please subscribe to my newsletter on Substack. Just go to mppelliser.com for a link. I want to thank you for being part of my audience, and I think you are all wonderful. Hi, everybody. How's everybody doing? Good? I'm doing good. Again, uh, even though the show's a little bit staggered, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, we should do the best, Happy New Year. Like I said in my last episode, I can't believe we're going into 2023. It's like, what? You know, it's like, who's, what happened to, to, you know, 2001, Y2K, you know, well, 2000 really, actually. And here we are, uh, 20 something years in the future, 23 years, going into 23 years. And uh, yep, yep. It's kind of crazy. Um, uh, you know what? I see a lot of people shopping, which is good. But um, yeah, it's it's a different it's a different atmosphere. But I will tell you this: I see at least in my neighborhood, I've seen more people putting up Christmas decorations, like outside, like the lights and you know those inflatables, like. Last, you know, last couple of years, yeah, people were there, but more or less everything was kind of on the dark side. But now it's like everybody's making up for lost time. And there's a bunch of, myself included, um, a bunch of houses that have gone and you see that they've done the decorating and, you know, some go, you know, like, you know, the full Monty, you know, like, okay, is there, any, is there a house back there? But yeah, most everybody has, I've seen around my neighborhood, uh, even though it's a rural area. Uh, they've they've put out some type of decoration out there okay which i think is everybody just trying to be happy you know it's the holidays you know like you know once upon a time like when you were a kid and they said christmas it was like <gasps> and I, I i laugh because when you were a child that this once you know this it's a yearly thing a year was a long time <laughs> so christmas was a big deal and now of course that thing about it, a year being a long time like yeah all right okay yeah <laughs> Not anymore. Like I said, here we are in 2023. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It felt like the other day I was trying to get myself to remember to write 2022. You know, when you write it, date stuff, you keep trying to use the prior year. And it's like, no, now pretty soon you're going to just have to write 2023. So that, there goes that. But anyway, let's get on to the good stuff. The good stuff is who we have as a guest today at Stories of the Supernatural. Not one, but two. I've got two guests together. Uh, this is the first time that they've been here. And uh, the, the gentleman, his name is Dr. Dave Bettenhausen, and he serves part-time as the vice president of medical affairs at a small Midwestern hospital. And he retired after 25 years as a physician and 10 previous years as a cardiac surgical nurse. Uh, Carly Bogney Kidd, uh, which is the other person here that we're going to interview today, she's retired after 40 years of office managing for Dave and his predecessor. Dave and Carla have had a close relationship since 1998 when Dave purchased the medical practice where Carla was the office manager. Together, they have been on a spiritual journey since beginning meditation in 2014. They have written four books. The first, The Gift of Past Lives with Mother Isabella, God, and Elizabeth, is the story of how they learned they have lived 29 past lives together. Their second book, Hell No, Reincarnation, <laughs> is their reconciliation of their upbringing in Catholicism and other religions with what they now learned and believe about reincarnation. The manual explores just how God creates us and how he that relates to our angel, spirit guides, astrology traits, and archetypes. Her Huba and His Rose is her fourth book, 
which takes place during the Second Temple period in Jerusalem. It is a love story, love of a couple, love of their families, love of a community, and love of the people for their God. This story is not about them, but their characters in that time. Dave and Carla have taught meditation at their local university, as well as their senior center and services organizations. They train with Dr. and Mrs. Brian Weiss. Woo! Many lives, many masters. I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, at the Omega Institute and Past Life Regression after writing their first two books to learn about regression therapy. Help me welcome them. How are you both doing today, Dave and Carla? We're great. How are you? Good. Well, we're doing fantastic. Another great day in the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, raining. well, you know, we're, we're about to go into a cold spell here in Northern Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna oh. we're gonna drop them down into the 40s and 30s and stuff Ooh. like that. And for us, you know, Floridians, it's, it's like, I mean, it's like, wow, that's that's oh my god, that's so cold. That's like Arctic, <laughs> you know. But it's your turn. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll be 17 degrees on Christmas, so don't. Okay, don't, don't all right. Bad. Don't feel bad. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's one of those things by comparison. But yeah, it's one of the, th the only thing I'm thankful for is because I grew up in Miami. I was born and raised in Miami, which is subtropical weather. So when I came up here and we've been here a couple of years, I was like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> because down there, if it drops down to 50, you're like pulling out the sweaters. Oh, it's so cold. And uh, yeah, it's like, all right. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, uh, the, the, you get used to the thing with the snow and, and things like that. I think it's just a state of mind as Indeed. far as uh, living that way. Now, let me ask you, obviously from the bio, you both met, Carla, you were the office manager, what, at a practice, right? Yes. And Dave I came. Bought, I bought the practice. And you bought the practice. Okay. Correct. How did you guys go from a professional setting, like, to going to reincarnation and meditation and all that other stuff? Well, Marlene, it's a, it's a, a long enough story, but we have time. So you go right ahead. So I I bought the practice. Carla and I became great friends. She's okay. one of the most supportive persons I have ever known. My best friend, without a doubt, for for years. We started Electronic Medical Records back in 2014. Okay. Oh yeah, 2011. But 2014 was when we went live. And it was the worst experience of my entire medical practice. It was a horrible nightmare. If you were trying to see the same number of patients, you couldn't do it. I was getting up at 5.30 in the morning. Sometimes I didn't leave the office till 7, opening the computer, working on notes constantly, staring down at the computer all day while uh -huh. patients were there. It was a different way to practice medicine, and I hated it with a passion. And he was a crab. I well, mean, you know what? Is that was that was in pursuit of the paperless environment, which. Oh, yes. yes. And we're you know what 29. That... So to make that switch, I mean, we had computers, yeah. but to make everything, all charts and everything electronic. That I got crazy. shingles. Yeah. I had shingles. And Dave was, who is normally a cross between Yogi Bear and Fred Flintstone. Uh -huh. He was the biggest crab. You couldn't talk to him. And. You know, there just came a day when I said, Dave, we have to do something. Do you want me to yeah. call a counselor? No. So I was reading an AARP magazine okay. about the benefits of meditation. So I All brought right. it in and I thought, what the heck? I said, Dave, we have to do something. I'll call a counselor or we can try and meditate. Well, which one do you think he chose? He said meditation, of course. Because no physician would admit any weakness. <laughs> of Just course, so you right. Know. It's like, or, it'll or be our right. secret, you know? <laughs> yeah. like, yes, nothing ever goes wrong with us. We're yes. absolutely 100% healthy. I can imagine. Perfect. Yes. So we decided we would meditate with the whole office. We had a small office and would do it before the patients began. Okay. So, you know, the first day we were all there and it's, you know, it's extremely hard to turn your brain off. Um, mm -hmm. And we're bombarded with all types of, you know, telephones and computers and sure. TVs and everything. So to sit there for 35 minutes afterwards, we all said, wow, that was really difficult. The second day we all commented on seeing, you know, bright colors. And the third day the office girl said, well, you know, we'll just do it at home. We don't want to come in early. So Dave and I said, <laughs> Yeah. Well, we'll just do it ourselves, and they can do it at home. 
So we did. And after about 35 minutes, we could hear the patients coming in. So we got up, went to our joining offices and Dave came up behind me and he said, Carla, I know you'll think I'm strange, but I think I was just talking to your mother. Well, oh my couple, God. Well, <laughs> your mother. my mother who died 18 years before that he never met. Okay. So I thought, first of all, why is she coming to you? I was meditating right. too. And then I thought, huh, well, I've always been rather open-minded, you know, even belonging to different churches. If they told me right. just to believe, I, I didn't go for that. So I thought, okay, it's a possibility. Well, my sister happened to be working in the office at the same time. She went in the back, she got her wallet, she brought up a picture of my mother and she showed it to Dave and Dave oh, thought, yeah. He had never even seen her. No, no, he didn't know anything about my mother, ex, you know, except what she died from. And okay. The, the other part of the story is I, I told Carla, the reason I think it's your, it's your mother is she was so jovial. She reminds me of you kind of with that side view. I could see the same eyelashes. And I said, the strangest thing, she kept showing me a shoe. And of course I went to the computer and I Googled ballroom well, dancing shoes. And I said, which one? There were like 60 or 70 pair on the screen. And he picked out the exact ballroom dancing shoe that my mother wore her entire life. It was a short pump, open-toed sandal. She wore it for uh -huh. church. She wore it for dress up. And she wore it for ballroom dancing. So that was our first aha moment. And then when my sister showed him the picture, he got very emotional. And we said, what's the matter? And he said, you know, it was very spiritual, but that's who I was speaking with. But, okay. So let me ask you, did this happen while you were meditating? This was, yes. yes. Okay, so did you see her, or did you see her in your mind? In your mind, Zana? I saw her really in my mind. And but let me ask you: so what was it? This lady with a shoe? What, what was it? Did she talk to you, or was she just showing you something? She was happy. She was showing me the shoe. She was like jovial energy. Uh huh. But I and and I don't know why I knew it was Carla's mother. I just knew it. I, I, that's why I was going to ask you what led you to, you know, that it first just, thing, like, I'm sure you had patients and people that you, that you were thinking, is this one of my patients that I don't remember that's showing me a ball? Yeah. Yes. No, we call but, that knowing. Sometimes okay. you, you just yeah, sure. know, you just know. And so of course, nobody wanted to go see patients, but they're all coming in. So I'm, okay. and I all day I'm thinking I'm raised Catholic. This is impossible. I've lost my mind. Something is wrong with me. Carla's going to have to find me a real counselor. Carla keeps coming back and saying, when can we meditate again and see if we can talk to mom? And I'm like, okay, I've lost my mind, but I can't let any patients know because I'm a doctor and I have to be perfect. Oh so, my God. Yeah. You know, so I'm going up and down the hall doing normal things, already mad at the computer because though meditation calmed me down so much that we actually did a bunch of research on meditation. We taught meditation for a while. Okay. We saw some benefits. tangible benefits, including at that time I had ballooned to such an incredibly high weight. Okay. Uh, that over the next year I meditated every day. Okay. And lost two pounds a week for 52 weeks in a row wow. and dropped 104 pounds. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. That is incredible. It makes you your better self. It it so makes let me you ask you something. And I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. ask you real quick with the meditation, with the with the with the with, what did the meditation lower your anxiety? And maybe you thought you were eating as far as a distraction for your anxiety. Is that how it worked for I, you? I, yeah, I believe because oh, so. the research that, that we did on it was we found that of course meditation, because it reduces anxiety mm -hmm. and stress, drops your cortisol level. Ah, okay. It's okay, hormone, okay. which makes you hungry. Which may, yeah, drives all that behavior that, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That is so interesting. Now, Carla, let me ask you, prior to this, had you ever had any communication from your mom before? Um, actually, I had. I had been to a couple of uh, mediums okay. in the past. And I've always been into astrology. You know, my family and my friends always thought I was kooky, but whatever. Okay. Um but I, one time I had gone to a medium after my mother passed and um, she did come through and she was talking okay. to me. So, you know, I believed it could happen. 
So wow. I, I believe Dave, there was no reason in knowing Dave for 20 years, there was no reason to not believe what he was telling me. And then okay. um, as we continued to meditate, um, Dave and all of us were getting like faces and places and objects. And we just continued to write everything down, hoping something that would, would make some sense. And okay. just a couple of days into it, Dave met his spirit guide. She came to him okay. and said, I've been with you for over 6,000 years. My name is Isabella. Um, I've been okay. with you through your 42 lives. And we found that I had 34 lives and 29 were together in all capacities. Not as okay. a love interest. I've been his mother. Mm -hmm. I've been his sister, right. his neighbor, all of the above. And so we kept meditating because I'm, okay. the lady is talking to me that I okay. don't understand. I still think maybe I'm off a little bit. And then there became a day where I'm meditating. And there had been a day where I saw this big gold dome. And Carla said, well, maybe it's in Boston. And I'm like, maybe, I don't know. And then okay. there became a day where I was meditating and I had this clear, the most clear memory of my life when I was three years old in this life. Wow. It was, it was an incredible memory. And I remembered because we lived in Nebraska. My dad had gone had been in the Korean war was going back to graduate school under the GI bill. Mm -hmm. And we got in this blue sedan that was the first brand new car they had. And we drove all the way across the country. And he kept okay. telling me we were going to Boston. Okay. And it's, and I, 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 a... I know it, it's a very, I mean, I remembered the day that I was standing on the front seat, things that three-year-olds don't usually remember. Exactly. Exactly. And got to Boston. I remembered the married student brick housing. I mm -hmm. remembered the most incredible memory came through of going to the beach in Boston. Okay. And I remembered going to the beach. I was so excited because I had never seen an ocean because I was in. Oh, that's right. You're in Nebraska. And I'm walking down this souvenir shop. And then we cross the street, go past this brick wall. And then we're at the beach. And I'm looking over to the side and I could see an amusement park where the Ferris wheels going and little feet hanging down. And I could see a roller coaster in the background. And I remembered, I started just running on the beach and screaming at the top of my lungs. Cause it was so exciting. Right. Yeah. This is, this is a child. Yeah. And as I'm running, suddenly this voice screams out, be quiet. You're bothering my family. All right. And I looked over, and this little girl ran over and she pushed me down, sat on my chest, gave me a kiss on the forehead. She jumped up, stood with her hands on her hips in this little two-piece blue ruffled bathing suit. And in the background, I heard the woman who I met a few okay. years when I was meditating say, Carla, that's not how little girls act. Oh, and I said, Dave, I remember that day. I didn't need to meditate. We were not well off. You know, I was the youngest of six girls, good Catholic family. My parents were always splitting whoa, up. Whoa, wait, you were the little girl? I was the, the little, little girl. girl. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I was That's from Boston. incredible. Well, my sister and I, uh, well, all of my sisters and I were at the beach that day. My parents had gotten back together uh, we didn't have our own car. Daddy rented two cabs and we went to Revere Beach. So as Dave told this story, we knew it was Revere Beach because Revere had an amusement park with it. And I remember okay. the day because when we arrived, for whatever reason, normally I inherited a bathing suit from one of my sisters, but I didn't have one. And all of my okay. sisters got a bathing suit. My parents couldn't afford it, but we went across the street to one of the little souvenir shops and I got my first uh -huh. brand new two-piece blue ruffled bathing suit. It was etched in my mind. So when Dave said this, we thought, wow, how could he know that? And we didn't meet again for 35 years. That's incredible. That's incredible. Wow. 
I mean, what are the odds that you guys would ever cross paths again? There's no so, such huh. thing as coincidence is what Isabella tells us. And Let so, me ask you, sure. Carla, when he described that, did you recall it or did you look at him and go, oh. huh, what are you talking about? Oh, no, no. I, I remembered it. I didn't have to be meditating okay. to remember that. I okay. remember that day because I didn't have new clothes and my okay. parents were always split up. So that particular day that okay. we, you know, went there, we got there in the cab and I remember going across the street and I remember my sister just next to me in age, she was whining because I was getting a new bathing suit. And my older sister was complaining because she was there without her friends and, you know, it was a typical family. Um, so, right. you know, all uh -huh. of those things you remember etched in my, I could draw that bathing suit for you today, color and all it's, it's that etched in my mind. And you know why I find this fascinating because I've been a hypnotherapist. I don't do hypnotherapy, but I've done a lot of past life regression and age regression, mm -hmm. you know, and I know as far as the power of the subconscious mind, you know, how we do yeah. store things in there, but yes. it's really weird because you recall it sometimes at appropriate times. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And so, yeah, that's so interesting. God, I can't. <laughs> so when, when you guys are doing this, uh, what, what did you, what would you continue to do? You just continue to meditate every morning. We continue and, yes. to meditate every morning and night. And again, Isabella came through and then we had a, a morning as I was meditating. Okay. And I looked up as I'm meditating supposed to be off. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So you were I you were doing Yeah, I was meditating one morning again and as I looked up, I realized I was suddenly looking across a dark alley. And as I looked across the alley, I could see this woman standing there and I knew it was Carla. Now, okay. when I say I knew it was Carla, it looked like Carla. She still had the same steel blue eyes. She was a 21 year old of some kind or some, you know, very relatively young woman. Okay. Her hair was slicked back. She had this little gold band on her head, a okay. fringe skirt. And I'm looking at her and she looks horrified. Suddenly there's two large flashes, a gun sound bang goes off. And I realize I'm shot and I'm suddenly thrown back and I know I'm shot and I'm dying in a dark alley somewhere. Okay. Is... The next day while I'm meditating, the most interesting thing happens. It's before that day, and I'm on the way to a wedding. So and you're I'm... going back to that lifetime. Yes. I'm like. Okay. While I'm meditating, I go back and I'm oh. heading to a wedding. Okay. And as right. I'm going to the wedding, I'm in this old looking small car. And we pull up in Chicago, Illinois, in front of Ashland Auditorium. Okay. Now, I'll tell you this, I had never been to Ashland Auditorium before this. Okay. But I pull up in front of Ashland Auditorium, and I run up the steps, and there's a makeshift church inside there. It's packed with people. And I'm led down one side, and I know I'm going to the wedding of a man named Angelo. Okay. And as I'm sitting at the wedding, the wedding singer comes out and it's the same woman who was standing in the alley. And she okay. sings for the wedding. Okay. And at the reception, I go and meet her. All right. I have to meet her because she sang so beautifully. I was somehow drawn to her completely. I had to keep pestering her at the wedding. She finally agreed to dance with me. She kept pushing me away, pushing me off. I kept asking her to go to breakfast the next day. She finally agreed to go to have breakfast at Marino's in Chicago mm -hmm. the next day, okay. which was January 10th, January 11th, 11th 1925. Mm -hmm. Okay. The memory continues. I'm sitting in Marino's little restaurant having breakfast with her the next morning. Okay. And we walk along the Chicago coastline and it's freezing. It's cold. We're bundled up. She doesn't come to the breakfast very fancy. She just has this wool coat. She keeps pulling it up. She hangs on because it's cold. We walk up and down the, the Chicago coastline. And she tells me her name is Ruby Donaldson, born in Bullock, Georgia. 
Okay. To James and Anna Donaldson, and that she moved to Chicago to become a singer and a dressmaker. Okay. Wow. I I, I have way too many things that I'm trying to tell Carla afterwards. Not are, sure. we, are we talking here, what, Prohibition era? 1920s? Yes. Okay. 1925. So that right. wasn't that long ago when he gave me the information. Of course, I wrote everything okay. down. And then I wasn't working the next day. So I got onto Ancestry.com. And right. I did indeed find Ruby Donaldson, born in 1904, oh. to James and Anna Donaldson from Bullock, Georgia, one of 11 children. Then I got on to some newspaper sites and I found okay. the wedding of Angelo Jenna to Lucille Spinola, January the 10th, 1925 at Ashland Auditorium. So I called Dave and I said, I have corroborating information. You're not crazy. Right. Exactly. This is not something you're just making up because uh, no. mm -mm. that is what. So how did you take that, Dave? Were you like, well, I was overwhelmed excited i kept getting more of this ruby and jj memory and one day i came in and i said carla sit down and i started to tell her the rest of the story okay and as i'm telling her the story it feels as if i'm jj talking directly to ruby okay. it's so real and carla started to answer the questions the same way Ruby did. It was wild. It was like something because took over us. We were literally having the same memory at the same time in the same room discussing it. Mm -hmm. You know why I'm asking you this? Because you're telling me the first thing you saw was you being killed. Mm -hmm. Correct. And when she, when, when Carla comes and tells you this person really existed, you know, basically she's verified. Mm -hmm. Did you start thinking, I was killed like because that's that's pretty horrific right there. Correct. So when no. you guys had this moment you're like okay and then you're realizing she's Carla is also Ruby. Ruby. Okay. And she wow. remembered Ruby and had some of the same emotions. In fact, we were embarrassed because that couple was very romantically involved. Mm -hmm. And we were not. We, we were, were married not. to other people. <laughs> right. Exactly. You were just like, okay, awkward. But yeah, exactly. Very, very awkward. Yes. But we continued to meditate. And we have journals and journals full of everything. And include, you know, most of our 29 past lives. We have such details. We know our names, our children, who our children are in this life. We know our astrological signs, what we died from, the age we were. So when we started to accumulate all this information and Isabella started to teach us things that went along with past lives. And she said, past lives are interesting and they're fun, but they're for a reason. They're not just for entertainment. She said, if you live a life um, following the five simple rules, you can get off that karmic wheel. And of course we said, well, what are the five simple rules? And she said, everybody knows what the 10 commandments are, but we'll break it down and make it simpler for you. Okay. If you live a life without conceit, jealousy, selfishness, and unforgiveness, and you make all choices and all decisions out of love and compassion, you will complete your karmic wheel, you won't be coming back. So obviously, Dave and I were slow learners because we've been coming I was going to say, that's a oh. human condition. Everything yes. on that is like, oh, boy. Okay. Over 6,000 years. <laughs> Very uh -huh. simple, except if you're human. <laughs> yes, but we, with everything that we wrote down, that's why we decided to write the first book. It's about okay. what happened. And it includes 20 of our past lives. And the lives okay. are fun, but at the end of each life, we write what we did, why we came back yet again. What was okay. the lesson? What was the lesson? Let me ask you something, Dave. What happened to you in that life? We that can't you tell you. Well, oh, I, well, I, well, well, it's like, that's like the cliffhanger. We're all part of this. All right. Of course. You know we got shot. I got shot and I died. Right. Because Ruby had started to work for Angelo Jenna who was the mobster before Al Capone. 
Okay. She had a speakeasy called DeAndre's in Little, in Italy. Little Italy. And so okay. when JJ started to show interest and showed up at DeAndre's. I was going to say, I know there's usually it's love, money. Yes. So, Sex. But that love, jealousy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when I showed up there, of course, the head mobster believed he really owned all of the ladies that worked in the speakeasy. And sure. they were an asset to make money. And so outside of that, I was a threat. Right. And, and so I got killed. So in, in book one, which is the gift of past lives, we tell the complete story of Ruby and JJ, star-crossed okay. lovers. Um, you know, it has its high points and its low points. But bottom line... You know, karma follows us and we don't want to think about it as punishment. We want to think of it as potential to get things right. So I okay. worked for Angelo Jenna against my will in that life. But in this okay. life, I married him the first time. She got even, huh? <laughs> well, I walked away. This time I was, huh. I was able and I did walk away. So in other words, you broke the pattern. I broke um, it. Yes. Let me and ask you, did you have... have had had Jenna done this to you before in prior lives? Uh, yeah, I mean, yes, we we have a long history, oh, and then right. my, my okay. second husband, we have a long history, and okay. you know, if I would have known all of this before, I probably this is why Isabella says that you shouldn't tell people's future if you mm -hmm. see it because it interferes with their path. Because had I not married Angelo Jenna in this life as my first right. husband. Maybe we would never have, um, you know, completed our karma and been okay because now we're fine. And if had I not married my second husband, mm -hmm. we would not have completed the karma and, you know, we right, might done have done whatever, whatever again. Yes. Because yeah. if you're not, if you don't, if you don't fix that problem, right. and, and I don't even like to call it a problem, but if you don't fix well, that, you, you never under, you don't get over it. You don't learn the lesson. You don't either not allow somebody to control you. Right. Possessiveness, jealousy, whatever the case yeah. might be. And so, and if you start to follow through with this, then you start to realize that we, we return in groups that we call soul families, soul groups. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you really have people in your life for two purposes that your soul family, if you want to call it, that right. is, is really those who help you. Okay. But you also have, or, or, you know, karmic mates, which are really here to test you. Right. Exactly. And there's a goal in, involved in someday you hope that everyone in your life is now a, a part of your mate. soul fam, a, a family, family mate. mate. If, there, if nobody in your life is anything but positive in helping you, then you don't have to keep coming back with those same people trying to break this. It's, Let me ask you, like, what happens? Do you develop new karma? Okay, like you said, let's say you've got this pattern with prior individuals in different relationships that, like you said, you might not meet them or you just don't get, you know, you, you don't have that chance to work it out. And un, in other words, not follow that same pattern. But do you ever come across a new player in a lifetime that might set you on a new karma thing? Absolutely. That's let's say, possible. let's say, like Carla, you said, I married my first, uh, you know, the first husband, mm -hmm. and we, we, we got, we, we put that to rest. Yes. In these lifetimes, is there? Could you, let's say, for example, in this lifetime, have a new player come into your experience? Well, the the players are coming in all the time because our soul family okay. is is big. It's not just ten people. You interact all of the time. It's funny because Dave and I take a yoga class three days a week. And I, my gift is that through the eyes, I can see somebody if they've been okay. through, you know, okay. in another okay. life with me. So, of course, our yoga instructor, because we all come back together to help each other or to test okay. each other. I, I felt okay. it right away with her. I knew that there was something to it. And, of course, okay. Ruby, Ruby did meet her. And, um, okay. He was positive in that life, but in this life, um, we're helping her in another way. Um, okay. So they may be there briefly. They're not necessarily new, but it could be just an in and out to see how you react. 
so let's say now let's say let's use the example of what you said that you know this time let's say your first husband you guys worked it out yeah. does that mean that say if you guys have another lifetime that's it you guys that you, you you're not drawn to each other to work it out because it's been worked out right and uh unless we would end up back together to help each other at this point okay since right. we right. have broken the karma um Right. So that, that does happen. And sometimes a family mate can come back with you and you end up creating karma with them. Our next door right. neighbor right. who recently moved has been in 21 of our lives karmically. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So in this life, we tried very hard with him and um, he came back to visit once after he moved and we brought him soup and we tried to be real nice and friendly um, because we want that severed. We don't want to continue. I was going to say, you don't want to come this, back. This, again neighbor, because... this neighbor relationship sounds like it's a little bit, oh, yeah. So, yeah. okay. Yeah. In other words, it, it doesn't have to be an intense, like marriage, love relationship. Right. It could be yeah, right. just a neighbor. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Marlene, even think of it this way. You know, when you go into a grocery store, and the clerk's mm -hmm. not having a good day, and the clerk gets mad yeah, at yeah. you, and then you snap back at the clerk, be careful. You might be setting up your next problem. Oh, my God. I did. <laughs> that puts a whole different spin on it, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> yes, but, you know, if you pause before you react, before you send the text, before your mouth opens, and you just say, oh, Am I doing this out of selfishness, conceit, jealousy, impatience, whatever the case? Because all of our little idiosyncrasies fall under one of those categories. Sure. sure. They all do. And if you just stop and say, first of all, we have all been kings, queens. We've all been rich, poor. We've all been black, white. We've been slaves and slave owners. We've been saints and sinners. We exactly. take turns. So there's really no reason to have jealousy. We've all taken our turn. You know what? I think it's just, unfortunately, also it has to do, even though you're talking about something that you know at a soul level, sometimes at our conscious level, we react either, some sometimes even with what media hits us, you know, um, or what's going on in our lives. And other, you know how you, you know, like you said, like when you do or say something that you know better. Yes. But it gets away from you. Well, and isn't that what it's all about? It's not exactly. what it's not what happens to us in life. It's how we choose to respond. Sure, sure, exactly. Or that you have um, recognition of it, you know. And by this, I'm talking about uh, you know people that are psychopaths that have no conscience or remorse that doesn't bother them one way or the other. And you know, of course, in every story, there's got to be a villain. So, you know, in the, in the sense of historically the world that we live in you know well that villain uh, sometimes you can have one person commit one act yes that totally affects your life in other words it doesn't have to be somebody that's normally in your orbit it but could that just be a villain, meeting perhaps like jeffrey dahmer perhaps mm -hmm. some of the um victims of his right they, he was you know they were his victim in this life and perhaps in another life, it was sure. the opposite way. And so, it makes you want to wonder like, man, if I, if you could do a, yeah. a, a, a past life regression, what was the history on those, those yeah. relationships? Well, we do ask Isabella sometimes and sometimes she'll tell us and sometimes she'll, she'll say, will this affect your soul? <laughs> and if it somehow is going to affect us to the good, she may answer it. Okay. Um, and sometimes she'll say, you're just being nosy. It's none of your business. It's like, it's you know, yeah. so you just have to assume my sister and I have this joke, you know, when you're going down the road and mm -hmm. somebody is right in front of you and they won't hurry up or they're behind you and they're riding your tail. So my yes. sister and I always say, oh, they must be on the way to the hospital. <laughs> that way <laughs> All right. we calm down. Yeah. We don't yes. have to be right. mad at them anymore. Yes. Um, right. No. Yeah. I, 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 and of course, you always run into those drivers when you're in a hurry. Yeah, fail. <laughs> yes. But that's for a reason. It's yeah. to help you. I only had one ticket in my entire life. I was on the way to the dentist. I got stopped. And afterwards, I said, 
Oh, Dave, tell Isabella, my, my perfect record is broken. And she said, well, that's okay. We did you a favor because at the next stop sign, you would have been killed. Okay. Say so. Trust okay. the process. Trust and there the we process. talk about, right, the, there, there's the intuition part also. Yes. Yeah. You know, a lot of people sometimes their intuition, they poo-poo it because mm -hmm. they're like, there's there's nothing concrete. And they, they, they go with that, oh, my imagination is running away with me, especially when they have that feeling that they really can't. Like I say, it makes you wonder, you know, planes that crash, how many people got on there? Yes. That had some type of premonition of not, but they were like, I'm not going to pay attention to this. Of course, if they're deceased, there's no, they, they can't come back and say, Hey, you know what? I had a dream. I had a feeling, <laughs> right, uh, right. whatever, because they're not around to say it. You know, every once in a while you hear a story about somebody that didn't get on a plane. That's rare. And they'll say, Hey, I just, I had a feeling the next thing you know, it goes down. I'm using yeah. that as an example, but the same right. thing of what you said, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. you, you go down or people that normally go to their jobs a certain route and then they decide on that one day I'm not going or I'm going to take a different route or in your case that you got stopped. And it's like, yeah. yes. So we've had so lots of interesting experiences like that. And some of them are because like we know so many lives in a row that we right. went back and looked at some of the patterns and you start to realize again, like Carla said, we've been saints and sinners and slave owners and and slave masters or slaves slave. and slave owners. We we actually have a series of life that I think is real interesting because okay. we're we're Viking landing on Scottish soil. In the okay. next life, we're Scottish fighting the English. In the next life, we're English fighting the Scottish. And in the next life, Carla actually is a Viking descent and marries into the English throne. So yes. you look at that and you start to realize. At times, we were even fighting on the opposite side of the same war. That's interesting, isn't it? And then that's what I'm saying. Sometimes it's your perspective on things. Yes, yeah. it's your perspective. So you thought you were absolutely right in that sure. one. Exactly. Next life, you're on the other side and you think you're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. How else do you learn yes. compassion? Sure. If you're if you've been a slave owner and a slave. Mm -hmm. You underside, understand some way both perspectives. And then there's the physician in me, so I'll have to throw this in. I did as much research as I could on okay. past life regression, on mm -hmm. hypnosis, on memory, okay. on meditation. And there were some very strong things that came out. The first ones were the time between wake and sleep, which is another time people have experience. Yeah. During hypnosis, during meditation, you actually have a period of time where you have increase in alpha and theta waves in the brain. Yes. Yes. And that is the marker of memory. So people will have will be under hypnosis and they have actually have increased alpha and theta waves. And that's when they have to pass life memories. I think that at least speaks to something. And then you, start, know, you start to look at consciousness and subconsciousness and, and you realize that there's a bunch of modular theories in the brain. And I was reading through all these modular theories uh -huh. and I realized that each and every experience that you have, you literally give it a numeric value that's negative or positive. Right. And it's how you start to make decisions. You start to add up your past experiences as negative and positive. And if it ends up a little negative, you try to avoid it. It ends up a little positive, you try to do it. But you save all those things in your subconscious. And if you save them in your subconscious in your last life, you're really saving something important that should influence you from your past, even if you don't remember it. If you so, don't consciously remember it, exactly. If you don't consciously remember it, it can still influence your next decision. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. kind of it that does. way, like, you know, when, when you touch something and it's hot and it burns you, mm -hmm. the next time something is hot, you pull back faster. Yes. That of course, you anticipate the yeah. burn. And the the burn, burn. Is, so I don't walk around in dark alleys looking for flappers anymore <laughs> because I'll be shot. It's like, yeah, man, the last time I got shot. Yeah. It's so, like for my troubles. Thanks. Oh. Right. So those are kind of those 
things that start to work, that you start to see that there, there could be some purpose for this. Exactly. And sometimes the reaction is what you're saying is if it's on a subconscious level, you might react a certain way and not understand why, but on a subconscious level, you might be recalling some type of experience from a prior lifetime. Yes. Correct. You know, and that, and, you know, and we'll talk, and I imagine also this will work into, you know, how people are phobic about certain things. Yes. That, Correct. That they, that they don't understand why I, it's, I can't see why I've never had a bad experience with the, either this circumstance, but I'm phobic about it. And sometimes that's part of your, let me ask you, do you, in your books and, and, I mean, I have my, my own, you know, personal experiences with this as far as when I was working with clients um, that sometimes when once you realize where the source from, it takes it away. It's almost like. Correct. It just it alleviates it. It's it's one of these things that if you acknowledge the, the memory, yes. it fixes it. It's one of yes. those things, you know, people start to say, well, how horrible it is that you were shot and or. This terrible experience happened to you. This is another actual scientific fact. Whatever you do overcome makes you stronger. True. And Let so you, adversity is, is, is actually something we should face. Because it oh, makes of course. I mean, there's no way unless it's just, just no way. When you had that experience that you were shot, did you go beyond the death moment of death? Or did it stop yes. there? We've done it many times. Yes. You've done, you've gone beyond yeah. the moment of death as far as what happens amazing. to you. Okay. Yes, it's amazing. And we do, I do have some intermission memories that we can talk about if you want to. Okay. Um, that's, that, 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 I think that's fascinating because people think that sometimes when you do these past life regressions, it's just the, the thing, but there, there's more beyond that moment of the physic, the death of the physical body, right? Like as far yeah. as understanding. Marlene, like, I why, have I have a girlfriend in this life that before we knew uh, where she fit into some of our past lives, she told okay. me that she kept having a dream about red carpeted staircase with dark wood. And she said, I don't know what it is. I keep having it over and over and over again. Well, of course, most of the people in our life and, and the people we run into, you know, podcast hosts, um, et cetera, uh -huh. their family. So we've been with them. And in Dave's and my very past life, we were brother and sister. Our name was Katie and Johnny. We again lived in Chicago. Um, okay. It was Christmas Eve, 1943. Okay. We were playing on our staircase, a three-story staircase in our house that had red carpeting. And um, we were just playing like little, like um, I was six years old and my name was Katie and Johnny, which was Dave was four years old. Our mother was downstairs wrapping Christmas presents and we fell to our deaths. We broke our necks. Oh my God. <laughs> so when my girlfriend started to have this, um, these memories, I gave her her books to read and she read the books and okay. afterwards I said, the reason you're having this recurring dream is because you were Katie and Johnny's housekeeper and nanny. And she, she didn't know that we died. What happened was we died. They took us away and she was, it was the Christmas holiday. So she came back a couple of days later with our presents and our mother said they died. So this dream, our, our spirit guides are only going to let us see something that will affect us and help us. And, you know, that's happened with other people. The, the regressions we do are on our friends and family. We don't mm -hmm. do it for a living, but, um, you know, we had some great experiences with Dr. Weiss and, right. and his um, yes. wife at the Omega doing that from people with right. people all over the world. Yeah. Omega was a, Dr. Weiss is a wonderful man, by the way. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the Omega training week with him, one of the most amazing weeks it is really profound to have 150 people in the same room having the same experiences or have had experiences before they got there that are they're all sharing. Because right. We're in, you know, small town USA and people don't talk about this thing. Yeah. Well, well, see, this is the thing. I remember when I read Many Lives, Many Masters back mm -hmm. in the 80s. Yes. Okay. He was, you know, in the introduction to his book, 
he was so he was purely scientific his yes. there was no room in there for yes. anything having to do with past life regression mm -mm. I, forget it and if i remember correctly he let this run i think i believe the the name of the patient was Catherine, right I think yes so. yes but she he let it run because she, she's thinking she's working this out you know this is her imagination so yes. i'm just gonna let her go with it yeah you know, so he starts realizing but he was so not expecting to go where he where, where, where it took him in other words and didn't I remember I have to be there with them in other lives no he how can I say it because sometimes people you know when they go looking for things they find it yes but for him when you listen to him he I, I'm, I'm thinking if anybody would have told talked to him about past life regression would have said no you know that's not mm -hmm. okay well you know that's maybe the person's mind you know and he's yeah. trying to Working help this woman. Problem, and problem, whatever. Yeah. And and I heard him lecture many years ago back in, uh, in South Florida, down during the 1980s. And it was, let's put it this way. It was so full that they had people standing outside with the speakers because so many people came to listen to him. Because at that time, when that book came out, coming from somebody like him, like him that was so tethered into science. Yes. That it carried a lot of weight. Yes. And his colleagues uh, started to believe him. Right, 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 right. No, he, it, it, it was like, and I know, I think at the beginning, I think he took a, a little bit of heat for it. Yes, absolutely. Because, well, I'm, Dave, you're, you're a physician. I'm sure that, you know, uh, in the medical field, you know, it's like, this okay. Would, yes, that none of this discussion happens at the hospital yeah. because oh, they <laughs> don't believe that they would, Yes, it would still be too crazy. Mm -hmm. or, if it, or if they had an experience, they'll never admit to it, right? They'll be like, correct. Well, yeah. it's it's funny that you said that because um, I had a, a neighbor mm -hmm. in her 80s and she moved away a couple of years ago. And, you know, I knew she went to church and, you know, very, I thought she was very, you know, straight laced and everything. And I don't know what made me do it, but she moved out to Arizona and I sent her the first book. Okay. And she called me. And she told me, she said, that book was so wonderful. And Carla, I have to tell you, I've been speaking with my spirit guide my whole life, but I never told anybody because I thought they would think I was crazy. Now, she was like yeah. 85 or 87 when she told me this. Right. Wow. So there it happens. People are afraid to, <laughs> sure. to bring it up. Absolutely. They're like, let's keep this because they're going to send the guys in white for me. Yes. Because, you know, even even when you were religious, you know, the, the only ones that got away with that, you know, were the saints when they had visions. <laughs> but that's yeah. about it. Otherwise, you know, either you were crazy or you were in league with the devil. Take your pick. You know, those were your choices. Exactly. Um, so if the saints that are recognized yeah. could right. have visions and be contacted by the spiritual world, why couldn't little old Dave here have the same experience? Sure. Of course he can. Exactly. We all Absolutely. can. So, so let me ask you something. Is Isabella a guide or is she an angel? She's, she's a, a guide. spirit guide. We all have. She's a spirit guide. We yes. all have a spirit guide that is with us from the mm -hmm. beginning. Then we have okay. other guides that help us. For instance, my mother is our gatekeeper and she keeps negativity okay. away from us. My sister is the person in our soul family that crosses us over. Okay. Well, so the spirit guide was never human, never had a life. And we okay. all have angels and our angels directly correspond with our astrological sign and our karma. Okay. And in all our right. third book, the manual, there's actually a color chart that shows, uh, for instance, Dave and I, Dave is a Pisces and I'm an Aquarian. Okay. And we both fall under the uh, yellow angel of Mario. And Mario okay. is the angel of selfishness. And when I found that out, because of course everybody beats himself up, I'm not selfish. Well, that's exactly what we said. But okay. God gives you that angel because you had selfishness in your past life. Ruby and JJ didn't think about anybody else except getting together and ultimately people were killed because of them. It was selfish. So in this life, God gave us the angel of selfishness so that we wouldn't do the same thing over again. That way there'll be that little voice in your head saying, don't do that. That's selfish. Mm -hmm. So right. you don't have an angel. You know, you might want to call your spirit guide. Some people might throw that into the, the guardian angel 
chunk, but they're actually separate. Mm -hmm. Some people have many angels. Right. I've heard that sometimes you have that guardian angel who's been with you from the beginning. And then depending on certain circumstances, you might have other angels intercede or help you depending if you're like in a whatever, if you call on them, I guess, if for yes. lack of a better word. They're there all the time. You just have to listen in your left ear. Okay. Now I'm going to, let's, let's go. Let's, what does, and I'm sure you've seen lately all these things that are going on with either ancient aliens, extraterrestrials, you know, whatever. How does this figure in all of this? All right. So Marlene, this is in no way meant to debunk anything that anybody else, ah! their experiences. So I'm, I'm just going to go through this. Because we've asked Isabella everything, mm -hmm. every question you can think of, we have asked and written it down. And so, okay. so what Isabella would say is, we're all aliens. That's the first thing she's said. Okay. None of us really were created here. Okay. So we all existed somewhere else before. So we're all aliens. So it, this place will always feel strange to you until you return home to God, creator, Tao, source, whatever. Okay. So that's one thing. Right. She says, I want you to think of all the experiences that people report. The people that report ghosts certainly feel someone who's passed over. Okay. People that think they've been abducted are experiencing a communication that you would call really psychological, because usually there is no such thing as any physical evidence after the exactly. abduction. It's exactly. all it's all a spiritual abduction, if you want to call it, or a connection okay. to something in the supernatural realm. Okay. Something outside of the universe, not outside of our solar space. Right. Okay. So we're experiencing a communication with something else. And, and people will say, you know, I, I I woke up and I saw nothing but bright lights. And the, the head of the alien looks like they had no eyes, but the, yet light, light was shining through and out of the eyes. And it burned through me almost to the point... And I had no control and I felt frozen there and I couldn't move, but there was bright lights. And then I saw crystals everywhere. Okay. I'm going to tell you that when I have an intermission memory, I return to a space that was my home before, which is what Isabella has called a pod. Okay. Uh, which is this dodecahedron shaped crystalline, so it's bright, so much light different. And, and because angel colors are so bright, if you're back in your home pod space in between lives waiting to return, it appears that you are in an incredible crystal, crystalline city with nothing but colors and lights all around you. Okay. And when we have seen souls that have passed over, mm -hmm. we don't take our senses with us. We don't have eyes. If somebody appears okay. to you and they look like us, it's because they're doing that so you will know it's them. It's to make you feel comfortable. But if you have an experience, an alien experience during the night while you're sleeping or whatever the case may be, they are without eyes. And they, you know, just like Casper, their friendly ghost, he looks right. like translucent, you know. That's how they look. They look translucent. They don't have a body and they don't have eyes. I've seen my grandfather during okay. um, during the intermission period, and he didn't have any eyes. The light was shining right through them. So okay, and I've heard. You know what? It's really funny because I've heard a lot of sightings of ghosts where people will say that. Well, they call them eyeless because yes, people, people yeah. expect to see. Uh, you know. Our face yeah, eyebrows our and noses and stuff. And but exactly. why, why do we have to be afraid? We don't have to be afraid, but we were taught to be afraid because we think it's different than us. It isn't. That's what we are when we're up there. We're just like that. And they didn't come here to suck something from our, our, our brains. They're coming to contact us to help us. There's a okay. reason. Do you think there's more than one, I guess, species, if you want to call it that? 
or is not, it just not you mean yet. In the, in this, yeah, not yet is what Isabella And saying. I guess what I'm saying is because you'll have people that will say, you know, the prototypical, the grays, and then there's other people that say, well, I've seen something that looks totally different. Yeah. The, and of course, the explanation is that there's more than one that's around. Correct. So, Marlene, again, this is another, unfortunately, the science part of being physician has always right. affected me in this. So, you know, Isabella said, there's there's no one out there yet. And then if you start to look at all of the constants and all of the, the inside cosmology, inside physics, quantum physics, you realize everything at, at this point in the universe is such detailed that our constant, our alpha constant here, which is a is, is a set of numbers divided into um, that quantum physics has determined the alpha constant on earth okay. is different than every other alpha constant in the universe. And it slowly gets smaller in one direction and larger in the other okay. to such a point that even at two or three standard deviations away from the earth, there, mm -hmm. A creature like us could not live. Okay. There are no creatures like us there. All right. That's what I'm made up of. Because we're carbon-based. Right. Alpha we're carbon-based. We're earthlings, for lack of a better word. I mean. Yeah. We're earthlings because earthlings can develop on Earth. Exactly. But yeah. They can't develop on, on the Pleiadian star outside of the fourth galaxy to the left of wherever Captain Kirk went. The other thing <laughs> is a lot of people that have near-death experiences say mm -hmm. they see bright lights and they may see God or Jesus or their uh, angels, spirit guides, beautiful ladies, whatever the case may be. And, you know, we understand that completely. Okay. Some people, few people say, I had a terrible experience. I went to right. hell. There was fire. It was scary. Okay. This is how Isabella explained it. If you're not in your right consciousness and you have a past life where possibly it was a long time ago when Nero was burning people at the stake, it was right. fire, it was scary. Why can't you slip back into that memory? Okay. Because we slip back into all other memories. And if okay. you believe that that's what's going to happen to you when you die, you are sure. going to conjure up that memory. If yes. you believe that there's Jesus and there's God and there's beautiful angels and your passed right. over people, if they're going to be there for you, normally somebody with a near death experience says that's what happened to them. Exactly. Right. I know that, that, that it's fewer more than most people, but you have those people saying, yeah, it was a really dark or bad yes. experience that right. near yes. death. It's like 95% have a positive near death experience. Yes. And, yes, they do. And what's real interesting is, again, during part of our research, and some of this is in our book, Hell No Reincarnation, you know, we went back and saw the research done by Ian Stevenson and Jim Tucker at the University of Virginia. They've been doing studies on people who have past life Children. memories, but they're but they only do studies on kids that right. are like two, three, four years old who say, I was so and so. Because they know kids can't be coached. Right. But they've got about 2,500 kids that they have called verified past life memories. Yeah. In other words, that, yeah, because that's the thing sometimes people don't realize with millions and well, billions of people that have existed. I imagine it's got to be difficult sometimes to ever verify. Not that they're lying, but it's just not everybody. It's has was written up about in a newspaper and maybe la in the last hundred years is then when really good records were kept of births and deaths. Yes. Correct. So, so they have kids who will say, you know, I was married to Mabel last uh, time. Okay. And I lived in Mayberry RFD and I did this sure, and I had sure. a dog and the parents take them there. And they the parents know where Mayberry is. And they mm -hmm. drive the kid there, who's three, and the kid calls out to the dog that's running down the street and knows that that dog's name is such and such. And they stop at the blue house that he said he lived in, 
and a lady okay, opens the door and he's and he, she, he goes oh, mabel can you imagine mabel's okay. like huh yeah and 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 sometimes it's, they do it relatively scientifically they'll have right no no i know what you're saying blog, like five pictures of mabel five pictures of a house five pictures you know of of the j- workplace that this guy supposedly worked in and then they'll bring it to a three-year-old and say do you recognize any of these and the kids yeah. pick out the right one about 87 percent of the time that's such a high which percentage. is which is way above the, the standard yes. deviations Yes. And the other thing yes. that they do is if this child who has past life memory says, I was shot in the past life mm-hmm. and they, he says, I was so-and-so and they go back and they find the autopsy report from so-and-so right? and they right. see where that shot was. Let's say it's in his arm. And this little boy has a birthmark in the arm in the exact spot. Yeah. Some, so they verify those also. Some twenty percent of, of deaths have have a birthmark associated. Yeah. They they did they um does Isabella ever explain why some people reincarnate, let's say fast, let's say like what you just described, where this child basically can go back. It's it's within the, the span of years that they can go back to people that they were living with why there's some people that do it fast and others it takes longer well Remember the, soul family. yeah so there's a couple things related to all this so first of all if you want to kind of think of it as one big matrix up there and you're close to your soul family and it, and the farther you get away the less times you interact with those people that you're close to and this is all turning around and within itself. So there's a time when it reaches, if you want to call it the, the spiritual birth canal. Okay. If, if, if you, if you died and the birth canal comes by quick and you have soul family out there, you're drawn into it. So you'll return to those people you need to go to. If you miss that cycle, okay. You may have a, you may have a, an atonement period that lasts 400 years till you suddenly are on the same cycle with all those people again till you return. You know, it's really funny. The other day I saw a movie I hadn't seen. This was from the 1970s called The Reincarnation of Peter Proud. Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is a really old movie. I hadn't seen it in years. It was one of those days I was clicking. There was like, oh my God, I haven't seen this. And it's funny because you look at it, it was one of those movie of the week things, but it kind of follows exactly what you just described, Dave. Mm-hmm about people sometimes, I mean, of course it's, you know, Hollywood dramatics, but it's where people get drawn back into, you know, you know, the, the theme of course was that this person goes back into the lifetime or of the person that they were with before. Like it was a very quick reincarnation. Correct. And yeah, last time Katie and Johnny, you know, we, we died in 43 and I was reborn in 58. Okay. So, yeah, but, which is, which yeah, is, not long, but way back I've had, um, I had one atonement when I poisoned Dave and killed him. Um, yeah. With, see, there's a lot of real stories yeah, here that with, doesn't make, you know. Actually, it was Nightshade. So. And Nightshade, yeah. that's interesting. And it's really funny because Dave is like, you already, we were, you already broke that, we already broke that karmic thing, right? About yeah, the, the poisoning. Really. But I was in atonement for 980 years that time. Wow. But think about it. If you have karma with somebody, and let's say I die at age 10, and the person that I have karma with doesn't die until 80, I have to sit and wait until they die till we can come back together. Right. So there can be some. I'm going to ask you because sometimes did you poison him out of maliciousness or revenge or what? No, I poisoned him because. Um, we were um, Egyptian. He was a okay. pharaoh. Our son, actually, okay. Dave had the same gift then that he has now. Okay. And he was very nice. He didn't want slaves. And he was releasing all the slaves. And our son did not like it. The son said, okay. I'm entitled to have slaves. What are you doing? So the son convinced me that I should kill him. And the son brought okay. me the nightshade and said, take it to him. Um, and poison him. And as soon as I did it, I thought, what did I do? But then the son poisoned me also. I was going to say. Yeah. Yes. 
I take it you've you've have you broken your 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 karma with this son? Um, the son in this life was my very first heartbreak boyfriend. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That is incredible. But, it, but yeah, they, they, the, the relationships switch around Yes, as far as... And that's why you feel really like sometimes you meet somebody and you're really connected. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. your energy is really good. Um, and oh, sometimes nice. you... Yeah. And sometimes you meet somebody and you think, oh, no, I've, I've, just, I've I don't that. like them. I don't want to talk to them. Right. And probably because it's karmic. So you just have to get over that. Yeah. And yeah, and sometimes Marlon, the when, dead. When you're going through this, sometimes you find memories being shot that, you know, that's a bad memory. There's a life in the Mayan times where we actually do human sacrifice. It's mm -hmm. the most horrific memory that I have when I go back and get this. And literally I could feel the soldiers from our enemies, when we would tie them over the altar and the head priest would rip out their hearts and pour it into the sun god's mouth. It was mm -hmm. horrific things to feel people right. shake and die. And you could feel that during the memory. It was terrible. So when I think about that, I think, how could I have ever been so horrible? Because we all were. We did things like that. We were barbaric. Well, this is, and this is the, that, that example that you gave earlier about the Vikings. Yeah. Think about it. The lifestyle, the mentality you were brought up to believe just to go a Viking. Yes. Okay. This to plunder and pillage and bring back goods. This was a good thing. You know, you were yeah. supposed to do this. And uh, if you were a warrior or Viking, the best death was, you know, you basically very war. Cause you go gruesome. You go it was horrible. Or wherever. Yes. yes. Right. To Valhalla, you know, Summerland, yeah. whatever. In other words, it, it, you know, and you think, okay, how much of it is the conditioning that we get mm -hmm. where you're trained from birth, basically from the cradle, that this is the desirable lifestyle you want to do. All right. Yeah. So it's, then you start thinking, okay, is it something you understand on a soul level, you know, or the conflict between what your soul knows versus what you've, been taught to believe is honorable and good uh so it's yeah it's one of those things like that's why i asked you when you poisoned them was it out of revenge maliciousness I, i'm a big believer you know as far as motivation what motivates you self-defense you know sometimes people do things because they have no choice uh that falls that that of that five you're like in big trouble but it's like because I, of course I'm a, I'm a big believer in the laws of self-preservation <laughs> Which well, is, there might come and, a moment. Believe that you it or not, Marlene, Isabella's had discussions on on that. In fact, all of us started at that point because we all start as infants again. You mm -hmm. must have some self preservation to be able to survive. You must need a parent. You must all sure. those things have to happen in your development, or you won't survive. And so. As primitive man, we didn't think at all about anything but survival. And food. But we've been able to evolve as a man to the point where once you get past childhood, you actually can make a decision now to give something up. Yes. Isabella says it's it's curious that the first time God is really mentioned is in the Old Testament when he makes a covenant, because about 6,000 years ago, the idea of sacrifice today for tomorrow entered as part of language. Well, I or imagine perfect. before it was the survival was a day to day thing. It was yes, it was. There was never a tomorrow. It was only right. if you it was not guaranteed. Ten minutes. You 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 kept searching for food, sleeping, searching for food until you, you start... ever have it. Did you ever come across it, or does it has Isabella ever? asked you and and i know people have said where uh children let's say miscarriages or ch a child that's lost will reincarnate back into the same family Absolutely. well funny you should ask that my mother um had six girls but before she had completed the first pregnancy um for five years my parents tried to get pregnant she had two wow. miscarriages they were both dave <laughs> and dave's mother 
okay. had two miscarriages before Dave. Both girls. Okay. And they were me. Wow. And in both cases, a lot of times the miscarriages happen because in my mother's case, okay. my mother and his mother had to be sure that they were having children for the right reasons, not because everybody else was. And it was the right. Yeah. So okay. it was never the intention for me to come to his mother or he to come to my mother. We were just the vessel. She was right. the vessel this for was us to learn the lesson. Or you had to, you had, I guess... To provide that experience for that yeah. person at that time, whatever, whatever yes. they had to learn, whatever. But then yeah. you think about it, you know, what about the people, children that die quickly? What was the purpose? But maybe they, they're, they're, an they a lesson. they're somebody else had a lesson. Yes. Not right. Exactly. Child. And so Marlene, when you look at those things, we all start to, to say how horrible this was. However, somebody got a lesson. And the other thing right. is. When you start to look at this, you realize that your soul or consciousness is something eternal. Right. And, and a life is nothing more than a blip in time. Mm -hmm. It's nothing yes. compared to forever. Oh, of course, but we're so we're so caught up in in our own lives and our own moments. Yes. In this yes. life that we don't even oh, think yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. Oh no. No, absolutely. Like I said, you know, when you were a kid, somebody told you a year, you'd be like a year. That's well, that's forever. <laughs> yeah, you know, like Christmas. I guess, oh, that's next next year. Like, and now you now know, you but, get yeah. up and it's time to go to bed. <laughs> it flies. Yeah, you know, and of course, it's like everything happens to you know. I, I think it it hinges on two things: Do you live in a hostile universe or do you live in a friendly universe? How you that's see true. things and how you feel about it. Yes. And uh, you're basically, I'm not going to say self-preservation, but your desire to live this life. Eventually, I imagine you will come to the point, you know, where let's say, of course, if not due to uh, an accident or something like that, that you're, let's say I'm talking old age that you're like, okay, I'm done now. I'm ready to go. But yeah, it's how, how attached you are. But in the meantime, it's like what you described. You know, even though, you know, that thing about, well, I'm going to use that, that very new agey trope. It's not the destination. It's the journey. Yes. Kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. We seem to forget that a lot. I think, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it's much not too... what happens to us. It's how we choose to respond. Of course. Of course. This has been so, so interesting. I, and by the way, I'm going to let you know, which is one of the things a lot of people don't realize that high states of anxiety will put you into a hypnotic state. OK, that's why you will get people that let's say if they've had a hard time at work. I'm not going to say this all the time. There's it's, there's, there's different suggestibility. Different people will go into hypnosis easier, different whatever. Uh, there's a mm -hmm. lot of things. But anxiety. And I'm sure I don't know. Have you ever had the experience where you've driven home or gone somewhere and you don't remember the trip? Sure. All, that's, all the that's, time. That's, that's, you know, that's especially that's, if that's you know, meditation, something like meditation. driving, which, you, yeah. you know, you're used to doing it basically on autopilot, for lack of a better word. I've eaten like six cookies while I was on the phone. I didn't even remember it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're absolutely right, Marlene. And we haven't even touched anything on religion. So if if you have any part of that you want to discuss, we can talk about that too. She's thinking. She's thinking. <laughs> She just went off. What happened? Okay, here we go. Yeah, don't know what happened. Here we go. All right, who knows? I'm, I, I'm there's two of me, there's two streams. That's wonderful. Yeah. You know what? I'm not going to worry about that. <laughs> I'll just go back and edit it. But anyway, yeah. Um, you know, I don't know if you heard that last part that I asked, you know, about people that you drive somewhere and you're there before you know it. And you just don't remember that trip. Yes. And yes. Sometimes it's that you're, you yeah, know. People, people tell me all the time, they, oh, I can't be hypnotized. And I say, oh, do you hmm. remember driving to work tomorrow, yesterday? Well, no, not really. Yeah. That's because you were hypnotized. Yeah. 
Yeah. The ones People don't that, realize that the different levels of hypnosis. The ones that say they cannot be hypnotized are the ones that are the easiest, it seems like. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say about the only type of person that I would never try to hypnotize is somebody that has some serious mental illness like psychosis or schizophrenia. That's like right. you don't want to go there because that, that that could that could get really ugly. Uh or, or they you know they're taking medications. Pardon yes. me? Yes. Or a young you, child. Right. Someone under 18. I've worked with young children. I've worked with young children, but you can't put them under too, too, too long, but yeah. they, they'll go there, you know? Yeah, I've done it, but you have to be real careful with that. As far as the age and the length of time, you can't do it like an adult, but yeah, it's, it's incredible that sometimes people don't realize that when they get all anxious and the reason why I say, and also certain beats of music, like I tell everybody, can you imagine going to a big blockbuster movie, but there would be no music? And mm. I go, the experience wouldn't be the same because a lot of those beats that they've put in these beautiful pieces that they put like John Williams Jaws. Yes. Yes. They will put you into, you know how you like they, yes. you're into that movie. It's very suggestive. Yes. It's very, oh it yeah. Focuses your attention yeah. away from reality. Yes. Just well, that's why we meditate with music also or chant okay. or okay. You know, times or things that, that take you away from, Gee, did I flip the laundry over? And that's, a, you know, what's really funny. I think that everybody that's meditating the first time you start, you can't, it's very difficult not to go through the to-do list in your head. <laughs> it is. It's like, oh, you know, and when I, and when I get there and did I, did I do? And after that, I got to go to the, mm -hmm. and you know, after a while, it's like, you want to get up and go do it mm -mm. because we're, we, what, that's what we've become a population of multitaskers, mm -hmm. you know, that's and God sitting there and not doing anything is like. Uh, you know, I could be doing this and this and this and this and this. It's so nice not to. Is it? Yeah. It's, it's let me so tell you nice something. It's, nah, yeah. That's why, you know, how they say all these, um, these, the hermits and aesthetics that were on the mountain, you know, and things yes. like that. It's like, yeah, because they, they got away from everybody going, Hey, do that, that for me. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, what can I, it has been absolutely wonderful to speak to both of you. Let me ask you, you have the four books. Are you working on a new one? Uh, yes, we are, but we have two puppies. <laughs> and what were we thinking? Yes. What so, kind of puppies do you have? They are double toy Bernadoodles. <gasps> a Bernadoodle. What's, a, what's the other part of the, what is that? It's a Burmese mountain dog and Burmese. a toy poodle. Huh? And then. Huh? It was a Burmese mountain dog with a toy poodle, and then they crossed that with another toy poodle. Oh, so it looks a little like a teddy bear when it's really young. Now it's a little bit bigger, but it looks like just this. This they're the very snuggliest little dogs ever. Very sweet. But we what do you have are they siblings? The right. Are they siblings? Yeah, yes. they're siblings. Yes, I have eight dogs, so as you can tell, I'm a Aww. dog lover. Yeah. Oh. I have chickens. Have? I have birds. I'm an animal lover, but yeah, Aww. I'm into animals. That's why when you said that, I was like, <gasps> yeah. We have yeah, two yeah, rescue yeah. cats and then we have these two. We would have rescued a dog. I've always had schnauzers, but we rescued the last schnauzer, but there wasn't really anything available and we couldn't get a big scary dog with rescue cats. So you know what? Puppies. That's, 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 uh, I've noticed that unfortunately the, if, and when any of the uh, smaller dogs, medium to smaller dogs, they got, they're gone very quickly yeah. and you get a lot. Of, and I know there's people are going to go out there and go, pit bulls are nice. Don't get mad. But unfortunately you see a lot of pit bull or pit bull mixes or American. And when you have, because my dogs are on the smaller side, terrier, small size, yes. I, yep. I, I can't risk that. I can't risk me uh, either. rescuing uh, a bigger dog like that with a temper. I wish I could, but I yeah. know I Can can't. You, it's hard to bring another dog that's five yeah. years old. Yes, in, exactly. That is, that is 60 pounds mm -hmm. around an eight pound cat. Yeah. Nope. You can't. You don't know if they're going to get along. Mm -hmm. And you what's know? really funny. I have heard of, not when they're brought up, not when they're together, like especially when you bring in the puppy, but I've heard that the cat and the dog, they'll be getting along. And then one day something happens and it's it for the cat. Yes. Something yep. that, uh, yeah. Yes. So we didn't so, want to do that because we love our cats. Yep. 
What do you got? You got two cats, you said? We have two rescue cats. Uh, One of them is white with black. Her name is Luna. She has, she's a white cat that also has like a cat sitting on her tail, like a cat within a cat. Yeah, when you look okay. back, it yes. looks like she's got a cat sitting on her back. And the other one okay. is gray, and her tail was, she was actually picked up by a hawk and dropped, so her tail broke off. But uh, You know what? That's why I don't have cats, because where I'm at, I have a lot of birds of prey. Oh. And I, have even, I even have bald eagles every once in a while, but I've got, yeah, I've lost a few chickens already. Oh. But, uh, yeah, and we uh even at night i mean they we've got some big uh screech owls and stuff that that they'll take you know but yeah so i i understand what you mean that's why i haven't gotten any cats because it's like we don't let our cats out there we we put them out in um they have like a tent that's all enclosed Mm -hmm. and we have a fun run that's like a tube that's all enclosed we put them out in those but they're not the you know the the birds cannot get them yeah we don't let them run no Right. Well, the cats, well, I have two that are left. I have a, another house in Miami where my son is at. And those cats, well, they were rescued in the sense that there was a park where you know, it was a big park with the trails and people started dumping their cats there. Oh, no. Oh, that's crazy. So one, one I rescued that you could tell it was a kitten. It wasn't feral. It oh. wasn't. It, so I took that one. There was another one, which you could tell I went and I... <laughs> And I came back in a little while and I don't know what happened to mama. Mama left them. I don't know. I took that mm-hmm. one. And another one was they dropped the same thing. They drop them off in the front of the building, an office building. They know there's always somebody like me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, ah. So, yeah, I, I and um, usually what I would do is I would fix them and they would be indoor, outdoor cats. But of course, it was a residential area. Yes. So. I've had cats for like, yeah, usually my rescues are not the rescue at the it's just rescue because somebody yes. dumped them and yeah. they showed up yeah. at your door. Yeah. yeah. Or like the, those feral colonies can develop really quick, by the way. Oh, there's a huge one in Finley. Yes. Yes. They're, they, they can develop. Um, and yeah, but yeah, I know what that's like. So over here, it's like, I, I'd be a nervous wreck because I live in a very rural area and I've got a lot of wooded area. And if that cat disappeared, I'd be like, no, mm-hmm. <laughs> I've got it. I've got like 40 chickens and the dogs and the birds. And it's like, if I put a cat in that mix, Marlene will go. <laughs> wow. So, so someday we'll get back. We, we actually did write a meditation book that is finished, but we just haven't published it yet. And, okay. um, and we are working on this other one. Uh, but you know, we have, the puppies have to be able to lay down and not need all of our attention so that we can get back to it so yeah yeah and they don't chew on stuff yeah believe me it takes at least about a year or more depending on their yeah. disposition but yeah yes. because if you there's like ch- children they know when you're not looking oh you yeah, know when you're not paying attention yeah yes, they's like oh look you're not paying attention to you. yes those nice leather shoes whatever mm-hmm. <laughs> i know Yes. And for my podcast listeners, what is the website that they could go to to get more information about both of you and your books? Um, our website is thegiftofpastlives.com. And, I, and there's okay. links to all of our books. They and can, all the books and everything is there. Yeah, They can email us if they want. Okay. Um, we answer all those emails too. Excellent. Excellent. Again, thank you so much. It's been wonderful to speak to both of you. And I want to wish you the best of luck in all your projects. Thank you. Thank you, you too. Thanks Take a lot care. for having us on. Oh, on Marlene, the contrary. I got one one other thing I like to say at the end. Whether sure, you sure. believe in reincarnation or not, try to take care of the planet that we live on, especially if you believe in reincarnation, because the the sewage you just dumped into the river is going to be there when you come back in your next life. I know. <laughs> I know. Isn't that? Because people think, I'm not going to have to worry about that until yes. they realize oh, they yeah. do. <laughs> There may not be a planet to return to if we don't take care God, of it. That's, that's a crazy thought. But yeah, that's something we need to think about. Absolutely. Very All right. Thank you. Thank you. Take care and happy holidays. Happy, happy holidays, holidays Marlene. Marlene. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Wow. I thought that was such a great interview. Ah, reincarnation. I know there's people going out there, nah, I don't believe in that. Nah, it's just your imagination. Nah, it's, and some people believe in it. Don't get me wrong. Some people do believe in it. But I will tell you, and because when I was doing hypnosis, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, 
I had people ask me, did I believe in it? Because I had people come. And I said, okay. Whether I believe in it or not, as far as it being ap- the, 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 um, how can I say it? The reincarnation, in other words, that our soul is reborn into different uh, circumstances until like a school type of thing. I will say that I saw reincarnation or the, how's this? Hypnosis for past life regression work for people. Uh, you know, a lot of people think, well, that it had something, um, you know, like a phobia or something, you know, something really sh- earth shattering and that the person saw this past life and all of a sudden, whew, that now I get it. Not really. Sometimes there's doubts. It could be just something, a doubt that you have in your mind, maybe about a future step or something that I even saw that during past life regression, this person, something clicked in their psyche, in their mind, and their conscious mind that they recognize what the message was. Because one of the suggestions that you do as a hypnotist uh, is what is the most appropriate lifetime for this person to witness? Okay, again, depending on the temperament of the person, depending where they're at at their head, sometimes people will go back to a certain lifetime that they could digest. How's that? It might be, there, there might be one that's more appropriate, especially if they're going through something in their life, but they're not ready for it. They're not ready for it. In other words, what they will witness will, it will put them in such a state that they'll just miss the message. They'll miss the reason why they're seeing that. So sometimes when you say, what is the most appropriate? It's the most appropriate at that moment to put put, put this person into understanding how hypnosis works, how the past life regression, how what they witness. God God knows people people sometimes think they're going to disappear into the either or whatever. Basically, depends on the personality. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. Um, Or most importantly, to show them something that they didn't expect. How's that? I had, I want to say 99.9% of the people that came to see me for past life regression had an idea in their mind of where, of a past life, a past life that they had had. Some were more curious than others and others were like, I know that I lived during this time because I have been. And they were flabbergasted when they would go back to past lives that had nothing. Not even on the same continent. With that past life. That doesn't mean they didn't have it. That doesn't mean they never lived or had that experience. But maybe for that question of what is the most appropriate at this time for this person to see that that time didn't really matter at this for what was going on in their lives right now. How's that? It was no, we're going to take you to for you to witness something that is something that you might be aware that you need to address something that you're under uh, going experiencing right now in this present life that this going to help you. Or something that's going on under your conscious mind, something that's working out, you might be in denial of it. You might not even realize it. Um, It might be a hidden memory, something traumatic that happened and you buried it and it's there and you need to experience this lifetime, whatever that was for, for something in your head to like, that you go, I get it now. I, I, I understand. That's why I was, when I asked Dave about, you know, when people sometimes have a phobia, which is an unexplained fear of certain things, places, circumstances, whatever. The, the aha moment, how's that? The understanding if they, if they see in a past life, why 
maybe they had this certain experience that of course there's when you put somebody under hypnosis where you put them in an observer mode okay so you don't want to traumatize somebody because on a soul level you know that what you're seeing even though you might not look like that person now that is you in other words to put you in an observer mode where you're not going to be traumatized by maybe seeing something really horrific or disturbing to you whatever that all of a sudden it will make sense to you. Oh, I understand now why I this scares me or or I fear that or this place or these people or whatever, whatever the phobia or whatever's going or knocking around in your head. Getting back to my original question, do I believe in it? I don't know. Part of me wants to say now that I that it works on people. Uh you know, some people came to me just out of curiosity. They were curious or they said, oh, I know that, you know, I was Scarlett O'Hara or something like that. You know, my point being. Yeah, but sometimes people, there's they're going on through, they're going through things and others are going through things. They just don't realize it. It's just going underneath. And yeah, I've seen people come out of hypnosis and go, I, I understand now. And I'm like, what do you understand? Especially when sometimes the lifetime that they go to is really normal. How's that? Regular. No, they were not uh, important people. Um, sometimes they were not even rich. I mean, normal. What I mean, normal, like very mundane existence, living someplace, marriage, children, long life, very... You know, weren't killed horrifically, didn't participate in a war, didn't basically very, eh, very vanilla, if you want to call it. And you say, there was something in there for you? Um, what was that? They, they, believe it or not, there's there's something that you recognize on a soul level. That all of a sudden you say, I understand. Because there's always, and, and it's one of those things that only that soul understands or recognizes. And And I had people sometimes that, some people got it like right away. They would, I bring them out of hypnosis and they're like, uh. and then there was other people that they would be like, well, why did I see that? I don't know. Yeah. You know, like, oh, like I didn't expect that. Why did I? And it's like, I don't know. Why did you? I don't, I don't, I'm not going to lead you. I'm not going to suggest any type, any time period, anything. I'm going to let you take you to where we said, what is the most appropriate lifetime for you to see now? Then I would get a call a couple of days, 48 hours, sometimes a week, where people would start having these really wild dreams, like their subconscious is going, wah, wah, uh, 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 and then I would call me and go, I get it. Having these dreams, I don't know, their memories, oh, it would just like explode in their head. And I'm not talking about nightmares per se, but a lot of symbology, weird places, Things, animals, people that they didn't recognize, places, houses, uh, a lot of stuff. And then somewhere along the line, it would just all of a sudden they would get it. It's like they're that like almost like their mind, their soul finds it. Oh, thank God, you finally like are do you get do you get it now? You know, and almost like it's almost like even when you come out of hypnosis, it's almost like the logical or conscious mind is still resistant. To recognizing what that past life was trying to tell you. And sometimes, again, it could be something traumatic or it could be something as in you were, um, how's this? I'm going to use something from one of my cases. In that lifetime, you were a very vain person. Okay. You were a very vain person, very self-centered. And... I'm not going to say you were, this is, but by the way, this is not necessarily a bad person per se, but uh, somebody that is very vain. And usually that, that falls along where maybe they put their needs before others and they weren't, I'm not like this. I'm not talking, this is a person is a scourge of society is going out there, but sometimes it makes them understand some of their present uh, experiences that they've had. 
like what Dave and Carla were talking about, as in you're trying to address something from then. All right. And by the way, sometimes this thing with the karma is not that you're put in the, you know how, you know, if you inflicted it, you're going to get the, you know, in other words, maybe the last time you were the person doing the bad thing. Now you're going to be the person receiving it. Not necessarily. You can find yourself in the same exact circumstances. And it's like, how do you handle it this time? You know, and I'm sure you've heard of people that sometimes during the majority of their lives, they really did, did awful things or bad things. And then when they get older, if you want to call it a coming to Jesus moment, they realize, man, I really harmed a lot of people. Or I did all these things thinking it was going to be justified. In the end, it didn't. It made me a bad person. I really felt horrible, even though I tried to maybe push down my 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 con my you know my conscience and and in the end it I I did harm for nothing. You know, maybe I was I loved money or who knows, you know, one of these people like, hey, whatever, you know, Wolf of Wall Street, whatever. You might you find yourself all over again in the same circumstances. And it's like, how do you handle it this time? Let's say you were a person that was really hung up on money, like that you were like trample, like walk on people's heads. You might find yourself the same situation, very wealthy with that ability. It's not what is the choice that you make this time? Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to come back as the poor person. You might just come back exactly. But what are your choices this time? What did your soul learn? So, yeah, I mean, it could get really deep and esoteric and all that stuff. So, anyway, guys, I really hope that you like this interview with Carla and Dave. I urge you to go to their website, check out their books. I understand that thing about the puppies. And, you know, um, as you can tell, they seem like two very down-to-earth people. Dave, he was a doctor for many years. Like I said, even when I made that reference to Dr. Weiss, you know, these are people that sometimes their background is not in a, um, let me see. Uh, it's not like the, you know, the person that you see at the, 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 that sits at the new age store, uh, you know, that's got the rock crystals and the, mm, and the, none of that, you know, they, they, their background is not, this is, this doesn't figure into their, and by this, I'm not saying spirituality, don't get me wrong, but this portion of spirituality it, that's not in there, you know, that's like, woo, that's like, oh, all right, okay, yeah, okay, whatever. And then when you see them find themselves in these circumstances, man, sometimes it's a very good source to have. Anyway, guys, I hope you like it. Come back next week. I have a lot of great guests lined up, lots and lots of great guests lined up. Okay, interesting people. Diverse ideas, diverse thoughts, what's new, um, you know, things like that. Because there's, let me tell you, despite all the changes that we see sometimes that seem like accelerated, there's a certain constant in the world, in life, that, you know, there's a certain stream that happens no matter what. <laughs> it's like, it is, you know. So let's uh, come back and we'll explore it. Take care.